Hey there, everybody. Good morning. Boy, we're quite a bit early today. It is Tuesday, the 5th of October, 2021, 8.34 in the morning. I've got some things that have to get done today, and so we had to get on here good and early and knock out the devotion. We're in Job chapter number 30 today. Yesterday, we saw a long dissertation by Job about what his life used to be like <clears throat> his relationship with God, what that was like, and then his relationship with younger men, his relationship with older men. The younger men were afraid of him and intimidated by him. The older men were uh, in awe of him and revered him and respected him. And so today is sort of the contrasting chapter to yesterday. As he told us how well respected he was yesterday, today we're going to see that those same people that praised him now deride him and they have uh, no use for him anymore. So let's pray and we'll read through the chapter together. Father, we love you and we're asking your blessing as we read and study here. I pray that you'll give us insight and wisdom as to how our reputation is affected and the opinions of others, how it can affect us. We do ask for wisdom and help today. Give us the mind of Christ as we read, please. We love you and praise you and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Job chapter 30, verse number one. But now they that are younger than I have me in derision, whose fathers I would have disdained to have set with the dogs of my flock. So those younger men that used to be intimidated by him, now they disrespect him and mock him and are rude to him. He said, you know, these are the same guys whose fathers didn't impress me, and now I'm not impressing them. Verse 2, yea, where to might the strength of their hands profit me, in whom old age was perished? For want and famine they were solitary fleeing into the wilderness in former time, desolate and waste, who cut up mallows by the bushes and juniper roots for their meat. They were driven forth from among men. They cried after them as after a thief, to dwell in the cliffs of the valleys, in caves of the earth and in the rocks. Among the bushes they brayed, Under their nettles they were gathered together. They were children of fools, yea, children of base men. They were viler than the earth. So Job is saying here one of two things. One is, hey, these people before they knew me, this is the way they were. They were hungry, they were starving, they could barely get by, they're using juniper roots for food, they're dwelling in caves and rocks. These people had nothing and were nothing, but I helped them and I was a benefit to them. I employed them and I gave them a better life than they had before. And now they hate my guts. It's really interesting how this has turned around. Or he could also be meaning that he didn't necessarily employ all these people, but this is their life. This is their state of affairs. And now because he is struggling, they're looking down on him. Either way, it's it's a, a humiliation to Job for these people that he either helped and put into a decent position in life or never did see a decent position in life to have these negative opinions and to tear down his uh, his reputation in their eyes. In fact, verse number nine continues telling us their opinion of him. And now am I their song? Yea, I am their byword. You know, these people that I used to help, now I'm the one they're talking about. I used to look at them a bit critically. Now they're looking at me critically. Verse 10, they abhor me. They flee far from me and spare not to spit in my face. Now, I don't think that's necessarily literal, but I think that he knows their opinion of him is not high. And so when they talk about him behind his back, they're basically spitting in his face. Verse 11, because he hath loosed my cord and afflicted me, they have also let loose the bridle before me. Upon my right hand rise the youth. They push away my feet, 
and they raise up against me the ways of their destruction. They mar my path, they set forward my calamity. They have no helper. They came upon me as a wide breaking in of waters. In the desolation they rolled themselves upon me. Terrors are turned upon me, they pursue my soul as the wind, and my welfare passeth away as a cloud. And so that first half of the chapter there, uh, the first 16 or first 15 verses, <clears throat> we see the contrast. The people that once revered Job and looked up to him, admired him, spoke well of him. Remember yesterday we were talking about Job was like E.F. Hutton. When he spoke, ever, all the old men listened, even the princes and nobles. The young men were intimidated by him. The life that he had built for himself, which, by the way, was a direct relationship or <clears throat> directly came because of his relationship with God, as we found in the first part of chapter 29, <clears throat> now all that's gone. And so these same people that praised him are now criticizing him. The same people that admired him now disdain him, and they, they talk about him behind their back. And by the way, that's how people can be. I'm not going to say that's how all people are, because I don't think all people are that way. But people can be this way. As long as you're doing well, they'll surround you and support you and look up to you. But if you ever have a bad day or a bad year, if you ever get into a place where you're struggling, <clears throat> Many times those people can disappear on you and they can vanish on you. Uh, there is a group of people who they only support and follow someone for what that person can do for them. And that's what Job is talking about here. When he could no longer employ them, when he could no longer benefit the community, when he was no longer the apple of, of the eye of the people, then <clears throat> they turned on him and walked away from him. Verse number 16 now and to the end of the chapter, is going to shift gears. <clears throat> He's not going to be talking about the people and their opinion of him anymore. He's going to talk about the struggles that he's going through yet again. And we've heard this from Job. Much of this will seem familiar to us. But the poetic nature of the verse here tells us the struggle that he's having, the pain. And we talked about that a little bit yesterday, too, that why is the book of Job given to us in this detail? You know, the best parts of the book of Job are the first two chapters and the last two chapters, and everything else in between is a bit arduous to get through. It's a struggle because it's discouraging, it's depressing, half of it's just four guys arguing between themselves. There's not a lot appealing about the center part of this book, but the lesson to take from it or the principle to glean is that sometimes... <clears throat> pardon me, when things are going awry in our lives, it takes a little while to sort it out, to figure it out, to work through it. And so take that from it, if nothing else. So having said that, here we go. Verse 16, and now my soul is poured out upon me. The days of my affliction have taken hold upon me. My bones are pierced in me in the night season and my sinews take no rest. By the great force of my disease is my garment changed. It bindeth me about as the collar of my coat. He, cast, he hath cast me into the mire, and I am become like dust and ashes. And of course, he's speaking unto the Lord as to the Lord there. The Lord hath cast him into the mire, meaning he threw him down into the mud. I cry unto thee, and thou dost not hear. I stand up, and thou regardest me not. Thou art become cruel to me. With thy hand, I'm sorry, with thy strong hand, thou opposeth thyself against me. Thou liftest me up to the wind. Thou causest me to ride upon it, and dissolvest my substance. For I know that thou wilt bring me to death, and to the house appointed for all living. Howbeit he will not stretch out his hand to the grave though they cry in his destruction. Did not I weep for him that was in trouble? Was not my soul grieved for the poor? When I looked for good, then evil came unto me. And when I waited for light, 
there came darkness. And this is where Job struggles to understand the justice of God. Because as we've said many times already, as far as he and his friends are concerned and the people of this time, the law of sowing and reaping was the paramount law. <clears throat> so if you did good, you received good. And if you did evil, you received evil. And so he's saying, did not I weep for him that was in trouble? And was not my soul grieved for the poor? He said, you know, I wept for those who were in trouble, but no one's weeping for me. I was grieved for the poor, but no one's grieving for me. Why aren't I reaping what I have sown? When I looked for good, then evil came unto me. So, you know, I'm pursuing right, but I'm reaping evil. Saying, God, this is the exact opposite of what I would expect from you. Your justice doesn't work this way. This is backward justice. Verse number 27, my bowels boiled and rested not. The days of affliction prevented me. I went mourning without the sun. I stood up and I cried in the congregation. I am a brother to dragons and a companion to owls. Uh, I guess let's try to interpret that. Brother to dragons. Dragons are seen as vile, evil creatures. And so that's how people perceive him. And he's a companion to owls who are most known to be awake throughout the night. And so he's up all night, not getting any rest. My skin is black upon me and my bones are burned with heat. My harp also is turned to mourning and my organ into the voice of them that weep. And so he's in a bad spot. <laughs> We've gotten that by now, haven't we? We understand where Job is, what he's going through, the challenges and the difficulties of it all. We, we get it. And this is more of it. So I don't think we need to elaborate much more on it. The chapter two sections, basically, the first section is him thinking about how good people used to be to him and the positive recognition he had in his community, now that's completely reversed and people disdain him and hate him. The same people who praised him are the ones uh, now criticizing him. It's just like Jesus. On the day that he rode into Jerusalem on the colt, people are praising him and glorifying him. And then a week later, those same people are saying, crucify him. And so, you know, when it comes to people, you're not going to please them. Uh, you're certainly never going to please them all the time. I forget how the saying goes. You, uh, you'll you please some of the people all of the time. And, and I don't know what it is. <laughs> you'll please some of the people all of the time. Most of the people, some of the time, but you'll never please all of the people all of the time. If you're looking to, if you're living your life to please others, then you're going to live a futile life because people are fickle and just as Job learned, they'll turn on you in a second. That doesn't mean you don't serve them. That doesn't mean you don't love them. That doesn't mean you don't uh, support them and be there for them. You do all of those things in spite of of what they are. All right, I'm going to leave you alone with that. Uh, 13 and a half minutes roughly. Please, as always, like, love, and share the post. And we'll see you tomorrow morning, continuing on with chapter 31. God bless you. Have a great Tuesday today.